Hey guys, and welcome to episode two of the Sock Witchery Podcast. My name is Lindsay, and I am coming to you from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, where I live with my husband, Colin, and our cat, Gigi. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Sock Witchery. First order of business, I want to say thank you to every single one of you who watched my podcast. It had way more views than I thought it would, and it makes me very happy, and it makes me obviously want to do this more. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. To those of you who watched episode one and have come back for episode two, welcome back. Those of you who are checking out this episode as your first one, welcome. Hope you enjoy my little knitting corner of YouTube. Today I have for you several whips. I have one FO, several whips, including a new, not a new sweater whip, but a sweater whip you haven't seen, and several acquisitions. I went on a field trip yesterday where I had originally recorded yesterday, but it thunderstormed during the entire episode. And for some reason, my audio was really screwy. So I decided to re-record today. Yeah, so we'll talk about the field trip as well. Okay, so let's get started. First, my FO, which is right here. These are my, they're not on blockers. I have, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I've gotten the blockers. We're good now. Uh, my fancy ones are hanging up on the wall, and I didn't want to stand up to grab them, so I'm just putting them on my metal. Bryson, Bryspun. I'm pretty sure they're the same company. These, I believe, I got from Webs, which is yarn.com. I know you can get them on Amazon. I believe Kay, who is the crazy sock lady, has a Amazon storefront on her Instagram profile in her link tree that you can just click over and get them from Amazon. Okay. Ta -da! These are my Blink 182 second breakfast socks. This was the, I believe, March Woolen Vinyl Emo and Alternative colorway. It's very fun. It is inspired by their self titled album which was one of the last ones they put out the first time they were together as a band before they broke up. I love these. I loved how they turned out. I don't know why it took me so long to get them done. They're so cool. And I just like the second breakfast texture so much and they're just nice and grippy. And my favorite thing that happened is one toe uh, grafted as blue and one toe grafted as pink. So this is my one FO to show you. <laughs> and these don't even count for sock cam. Summer Sock Camp, which the shirt is from, and I should probably mention because I'm a counselor, um, is a knit along being run over on Ravelry in the Crazy Sock Lady Instagram, or Instagram, Crazy Sock Lady Ravelry group. And all you do is knit socks and put them in whatever cabin is appropriate for the style in which you knit them. I am the Magic Loop Cabin Counselor. There are also nine inch circulars, DPN cabins, and a wild card cabin, which is anything that was not those three styles of knitting. So yeah, one FO for you. I uh, washed, all my socks are clean. Literally every pair of socks I own is clean and put away and I am at almost maximum capacity. I have one photo box from Michael's left that I can fit stuff into, which means I have room for 12 more pairs and then I need to think of a new storage solution. I don't wanna buy a dresser just for my socks, but it might end up happening. So let's talk about some whips. We're going to do these in a little bit of a funky order. I'm actually going to start with the sweater first because one of the whips I have to show you technically also goes in acquisitions because I bought it yesterday and started it yesterday. We'll get there. Okay, so let's talk about sweater whip first. Living in my Celeste bag by Emily of Fangirl Fibers. Celeste is a character from Animal Crossing. If you did not play Animal Crossing obsessively during the uh, spring of 2020 pandemic. This was part of a kit that I did with Emily and Heather, who is the lemonade shop. Uh, Emily may, had the bags, uh, Heather dyed the yarn, and I designed a sock pattern, which is available in my Ravelry shop. So, this is one of my Rymac sweaters. So, I'm going to pull the book that this is in first, so I can show you a picture of it. So, this is um, from the book Crossings, which is from Knit Picks. My goal is to knit everything in this book. I have knit this one, 
with the exact yarn and everything. That is the Klar Sock Pullover, which I wore during Vlogmas. And it's the one I spilled coffee on, if you watched Vlogmas. I love this book so much. Anyway, um, the retro pullover I showed you last week is also from this book, but that is in time out because I think I have to rip back to the saddles because I mistwisted so many cables that it's going to physically bother me. Not physically bother me. It's just really going to bother me. So I'm going to rip it back and fix it. Rambling while I try to find this sweater. All right, here you go. This is the Lucky Gansey sweater. I'm doing it in Wool of the Andes worsted, which is, I believe, what they call for. Yep, same, same yarn it calls for, just not the same color. So my color is Baltic Heather. Wool of the Andes worsted. It's so pretty. It has um, pink in it as well. Yeah, it just... I felt it. You can't get a good, a lot, Nitpix is really good about you, uh, their color car like online. You can't do justice to this in online. You have to see it in person. So here we go. The back is done. The back to the armholes is done. It's on this very old school safety pin um, stitch holder because I just like them better than yarn. It, it's easier to get the stitches off of in my opinion. So I went on Amazon and bought a bunch of old school ones. So you start with, it's very interesting construction. So this is a saddle and this is a saddle. And then you pick up on the back of the saddles and do this big braid, which serves as the back neck. And then like I'm on the front, so I've just picked up and it's just normal patterning and I'll go back and pick up a neckband when it's done. But it's got a little, it's got a honeycomb cable it's got an XO cable, what's known as a wishbone cable, which is the first time I've done this one. And then the center panel is a horseshoe cable and then it repeats itself across. Very excited about this sweater. Um, it's one of three Rhinebeck contenders. It's this one, the retro pullover that I showed you last week. And then one I have not showed you, I'll show you on the next episode. We'll kind of rotate sweaters um, per episode is the uh, Nor'easter cardigan by Thea Coleman. That is, sleeves are done, pockets are done, and the body is done. But when I'll talk about this a little bit in life stuff, uh, life's been a little busy wrapping up some, the apartment that we were living in. And so um, my headspace hasn't been there for that cardigan because you have to do buttonholes and waist shaping and it was a little too much. So <laughs> got a lot of work done on that sweater this week. So that's good. Um, let's see. Sock whips. Let's start with things that are half objects. So living in my So Crazy Crafter summer sock camp bag with my pins is my Hey You're Crazy Witch socks. So I got one done. This is my string of lights pattern. Did a black heel and toe. And this is, like I was saying, this is the Hey You're Crazy Witch colorway from Teresa of Pretty Twisted Yarns. It's so cool and so bright. And in true Starditis fashion, I have this much done in the second one. <laughs> so um, we are going up north this weekend and I have a substantial amount of car knitting, but I'm not sure if these are coming. We're watching my niece and nephew with my mom and dad and there will probably not be a lot of knitting time outside of the car ride. So I'm going to try and pare down the amount of sweater, sweaters, sock whips I'm bringing. I'm definitely not bringing that sweater whip or any sweater whip for that matter. Okay, so that was whip number one. Whip number two, that's not the one I want to show you. Living in my Kingdom Hearts bag from Fate's Thread. Getting a little blown out. It's very light blue. All the Kingdom Hearts Keyblades. It's a favorite video game of mine. Oh. And living in here is another half object. These are my Haku socks. So these are the ones that I pinky promised I'd have done for today. And I did not because adulting. String of Lights pattern again. And this yarn is very pretty. It is got teal and then purple and pink little highlights in it. This is the Haku colorway by Bumblebee Acres from their Spirited Away collection, which they released earlier in the spring. There you go, it's on their Coquette base. 
like most of my Bumblebee Acre socks. And not only am I not done, <laughs> I'm in the middle of ribbing and this is as far as I am. These will, these when I decide to work on them will go very quickly and then they'll be done. So it'll be fine. Okay, whip number two. Whip number three. I started these last Thursday. I've been in a little bit of a funk again with the adulting. And this is living in my Stolen Minutes Summer Sock Camp bag. Thanks again, Carrie, for this bag. I cannot wait to get more of her bags. I just always miss updates because I was teaching usually when they were happening and you can't exactly stop class to go, wait, I have to buy something on the internet really quick. Can you just do something? No, you can't do that, unfortunately, but yeah. This is from Dream in Color on their smooshy base. This was a sock set that I grabbed from Just Yarnin in St. Germain, Wisconsin, which is my, I like to call it my secondary local yarn shop because <laughs> it's where my, our house up north is and we in the spring and summer try and stop and patronize them to just you know, help support a local business. So I have, oh gosh, what is this called? I always have to look. Mist, okay, Mist of Nyx. And then the mini is called Amber Glass. This is their, their smooshy base is in 8515 Merino Nylon. And again, you're gonna be shocked, I'm doing the string of lights pattern again. <laughs> but here we go. They remind me of pansies, like purple, yellow, and white pansies. There's the heel. I could have been done with this sock, maybe this pair had I focused a little more this week. Cause I burned through this like that Thursday, Friday, I cast it on. And then we went, we had a busy weekend. Well, we had a busy Saturday and then a recovering Sunday. And <laughs> so I didn't get a lot. I didn't knit on these in the car on our Saturday. I'll talk about that during life stuff too. But I also have a GG progress keeper. Here we go. From Pitter Patter Polymer. Uh, she makes these little cat heads in different colors. And I asked her if she could customize it. So it looked like Gigi. So right now, this is as close to getting to see Gigi as you're going to be right now, because Khaled had to usher her from the room, because she was being really irritating. <laughs> so I might pop in a video at the end of Gigi making an appearance, but no promises, because she's a little bit of a diva. So that's sock whip number three. Sock whip number four, I cast on right after I finished my Blink-182 socks yesterday, living in my one of many Supernatural bags from... Fate's Thread. I like the zipper pull. It's got an anti-possession symbol zipper pull. Come on. Maybe? Kinda? No, it's looking at my face. Anyway, that's the zipper pull. And in here I have February's uh, Emo and Alternative 2000s Club from Wool and Vinyl on her classic rock sock, which is an 8020. This is before she changed her labels. And I am, I have a tiny, tiny beard, tiny goatee <laughs> of cuff. That, that's what I've got. Sorry, I didn't mean, I forgot to say, all of these are on US 1 2.25 millimeter, 32 inch cables, because that's what I magic loop on. So I'm in the middle of ribbing again, because I really got to be better about that. But I am notorious for just chucking things into bags mid, mid round, because I get up and get distracted by other things. So I'm gonna, my goal is to do all of the uh, club colors in the same pattern, so they're all gonna be second breakfast. I already did um, Mr. Brightside. I'll pop a picture of those right here. And yeah, so pair three, I have four colors that I haven't knit up yet. Cause yeah, we're halfway through. I got, I will show you June's today. Okay, last F, FO, I have one FO. Last whip that I have to show you will segue into talking about acquisitions. So living in my new Hannah Lou Designs project bag. This was the antique map bag. I believe it is their small, her small bag. These are sold primarily through Bumblebee Acres during their updates, which they're having one tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time. You should check it out. It is a summer berry update. There are some really pretty colors going in. I will have 
a color from the beach update they did, plan on pretty much there being a Bumblebee Acres colorway added to my library every episode. If I keep doing this every two weeks or yeah, this, there's a lot of it, all of this. And this one back here, that's three rows of nine deep. So yeah, I have a lot. Anyway, so I got this bag from their update from Hannah Lou Designs. And living in here are socks I actually cast on for Colin. I'm the worst wife and I promise socks and then very rarely do I actually finish them. But on the West Yorkshire Spinners pheasant colorway, I have actually started and gotten a decent way into a sock for Colin. String of Lights pattern. My progress keeper is from Simply Serving. I love how these are knitting up and there are a lot of colors he wears and he only has one pair of socks. Like I said, I'm awful and um, he's very protective of them. So I'm hoping that these will also give him another one to wear and not have to be as protective of the one pair I've made him. Okay, so that's the end of whips. Let's talk about acquisitions. So in the Bumblebee Acres update from two weeks ago, I bought that bag and then I bought, this is gonna be very bright and pretty, Ah, this is Safety Dance. It is a rain, one of their rainbow dyed colorways. So if I were to untwist this, you would see it's like half orange and half the variegated colors. And it's on their coquette base. I love how these rainbow colors knit up. Sarah of um, Bumblebee Acres, who is Senbi, does their rainbows. I have done only winter rainbows, you only want to have, and I have Soot Sprite's Heart Rainbows, but that's a very, very original version of that one, but it's very bright and fun. I got to get some of these whips off the needle so I can cast this on. I can cast on more if I wanted to, I just am trying not to be as insane. So the ones that I showed you last week still are hanging out. Some of those I haven't touched since I podcasted because... Starditis is real. So I got that. I also got um, Hypnotic Yarns did a box for Pride that is um, going toward the Stomp Out Bullying charity. So a portion of the proceeds went to that. And she did an exclusive colorway for that. And I was too excited when it came and I cast it on and then in my in my haste I cast on a pattern I wasn't loving with the yarn. So this is caked and has been pulled out again. So it's not the most gorgeous. It's not in a pretty skein, but you'll get you'll get the idea. So this is Grainbow. It's a beautiful light gray, dove gray base with some very primary speckles. It's very cool. I like it a lot. I will knit this up, but for now it's going back in the library, right here, until until some of these are off the needles. Okay, um, if you have not received your woolen vinyl email and alternative club for June, look away in three, two, one. You've been warned. You should fast forward, look away. Here we go. This was the June woolen vinyl emo colorway, emo and alternative colorway. It is Skater Boy. I got this on Saturday and I grabbed it out of the mailbox as we were leaving to go to the wedding we went to, which is what we did on Saturday. And I kept singing it in the car and Colin was annoyed because <laughs> that's just what he, we do not have the same taste in music at all. So he's not an emo, emo fan. Yeah, it's got some, I don't know if they're black. No, it's black. It looked purple in some spots, but black and pink and white. So these will be destined for the needles at some point. I'm trying to go back chronologically. So Mr. Brightside was January. Helena, I don't even think I said the color name. Helena, which is the color <laughs> of these, was February. And then Blink-182 was March. And then April, May, and June are all in the library. So yeah, well and vinyl. And then let's talk about my, oh, no, I forgot some stuff that I put up here that I did not put in the pile next to me. Okay, I have more stuff to talk about. I'm like, this feels short. I had more stuff to talk about. Okay, Pitter Patter Polymer, who I talked about a little bit ago with the GG Progress Keeper that I have. Um, I love her stuff. She has really good food. 
charms and I have a waffle, a pancake, and two donuts from her. And I realized I hadn't ordered from her in a really long time and it turns out that mm, Instagram had unfollowed her for me. Does anyone else's Instagram do that? Like I'll, I'll wonder why I haven't seen anybody's or a certain person's post in a while. It turns out that I'm not following them anymore even though I'm not sure why because I didn't unfollow them. Long story short, I ordered from her. So I have two in here. They were on their little card and now they're not. So I'll just hold them up. Actually, I'm gonna hook them on the card in hopes that it'll help it focus a little bit. So please hold while I do this and get this piece of fiber off of the thing. All right, first up, I got a Hostess Cupcake Progress Keeper. Oh yeah, that helps it focus way better. Okay, so it's got the very appropriate squiggly frosting. And then it's got a bite taken out of it. It's so good. Like the crumbs and like the way the bite is taken out is just so good. Her stuff is awesome. So I got the Hostess Cupcake. Put him back in the box. And because we love, everyone loves pizza, I hope. If you're watching this and you don't love pizza, that's okay. I just really love pizza. I got a slice of pepperoni pizza as well. You gonna focus? Nope. A little bit? Kinda? Sorta? No? There you go, it's a little better. Her stuff is just so realistic looking. I love it, like it's shiny, <laughs> like pizza would be. Yay, yay. So I got those two. Plan on ordering more. She has an update on Saturday, just tomorrow. At the time I'm recording this, it's tomorrow. So go check her out, she'll be linked below. Everybody I talk about should be linked below. And if I forgot, leave me a comment and I will give you the link for anything you're looking for that I forgot to link. All right, last thing before my field trip stuff. So Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady, who I've mentioned 7,000 times in this episode, um, is starting to stock in her Etsy shop her favorite sock knitting notions and needles. So I jumped at the chance to buy stuff from her right away. And I got this cute little package of things. Her packaging is adorable. It's in this little, little cute bag. And first thing I ordered was size one, 2.25 millimeter, 32 inch cable, chug your red lace. Oh, I forgot to talk about it. I have um, a pair of needles from Chiaogu that are just Chiaogu reds. They're not red lace and they have a kink, not a kink, they have a bend in the cable. Hold on. I got these at Rhinebeck and I've only ever, that was the only time I've ever seen them because I just started buying them. But look, they have this cool bend in it, which you'd think would be detriment or like a hiccup in your knitting. It's really not. I kind of like them. I use them not often. They're they hit like the, look at, ooh. ooh. <laughs> have to um it just has to be like the right combo of yarn and pattern and they just they flow really well anyway these are not those these are just not just these are the chiaogu red lace my preferred sock needle of choice so i got some of those i got a team cuff down progress keeper because i am team cuff down i got this delightful tape measure <laughs> it's a mint and pink unicorn it's, um, I didn't realize it was this big when I bought it. I thought it was maybe like a little smaller. So this will definitely go in a sweater bag, but super fun, unicorn friend. Put them over there. And then these adorable, they're called super snips. I've never seen these. And they're the tiniest scissors you will ever see because they've got, it's really nice because it has this fancy attached to the handle silicone cover. And then they're so tiny. So those were gonna go into my um, Stolen Minutes camp bag because Carrie puts in this Notions ring. So I'll be able to hang them on there. I haven't even taken the tag off this yet. So yeah, that's what I ordered from Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady from her shop. I know she just recently did a restock. So if you would like to get some of your own delightful Notions and needles, you should go check that out. I did not link her below. I will try and remember to. Like I don't have it in my note that I have did I just copy and paste. So I'll put that in there. If I forget, let me know. So, all right, now we're on to my field trip. So um, we moved in May, which I've talked about. And my local yarn shop before I moved was Cream City Yarns in Brookfield. I worked there for a time 
It was my go-to LYS. I still love them dearly and they do ship, yay. But they're over an hour away now and I'm, when I'm feeling the impulse shopping urge to go get yarn and stuff, it's not the most conducive. So yesterday morning I decided to Google yarn shops near me. I knew of a couple. I know there's uh, the uh, there's Fiber in Nina, which is where I ordered my, um, from the last episode of my Wool and Vinyl emo club that I missed, I ordered from Fiber. There's, I believe, a couple to the east and a couple of others. Anyway, my plan for the rest of the summer is to field trip to these stores because they're all within at least an hour's drive, at the, at the most an hour's drive. It's, I think it's like 48 minutes is the furthest away one. But I decided to start with my most local one, which is called Nitty Gritty Shop here in Fond du Lac. So <laughs> like I was saying earlier, I don't know if I said that or I said that in a different recording version of this, but I recorded yesterday and it thunderstormed the whole time. So it vomited rain yesterday and I decided to go to this yarn shop as it started <laughs> So it was really nice because I got the shop to myself for the hour I was there and it was awesome. So uh, it is owned by a woman named Joan. It's a really great shop. They have an awesome selection of stuff, stuff I had never seen, a really good stock of Malabrigo, of Barocco, and some really fun sock yarns that I, from dyers that I had not heard of. So obviously I bought some sock yarn. I bought the uh, West Yorkshire Spinners Pheasant Colorway for Colin from there as well. And I'm gonna start with, actually not the yarn I bought, but I really like goat's milk soap. So I try, if I see it somewhere, I'll buy it. Farmer's markets are my um, downfall. I buy like everything I can, but I got some lavender goat's milk soap. It smells so good. There's just something about the combo of lavender and goat's milk. It brings me back to my childhood because when I was a kid and I had first started knitting, I learned when I was nine from my mom, she would take us to a yarn. We didn't really have a local yarn shop growing up. Our local yarn shop was about 20 minutes away. It was called Studio S. And I remember they had this display of lotion bars that I'm pretty sure were goat's milk and lavender. And it just takes me right back to that and being obsessed with wanting A, the lotion bar, and B, every hideous yarn I could find because I've liked color for a long time when it comes to my knitting. So I snagged some of that. And then I grabbed two skeins of Indie Dye Yarn. Both sock yarns. Shocker. So this one is from Olive and 2U uh, Crochet and Knitting Studios on their Twain base. Here is their tag. They are on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. This is, like I said, their Twain base, which is a 7525 Merino nylon, four ply, um, 100 grams, 463 yards. And it's this really pretty mint, and I'm gonna call Little Mermaid hair red. And you will understand why I had to buy this color as soon as I show you the colorway name. That's me, and my name is spelled right. I mean, it's obviously not named after me, but it's hard to find my name spelled correctly every now and then. So this is called Lindsay's Song. I'm very excited to knit this up. I can't wait to see how this knits up. But again, whips need to leave before this can get cast on. So that spoke to me. And then this last one. So Joan, who owns the Nitty Gritty, Nitty Gritty Shop. So if you're from the Wisconsin area, you also know there's a chain of restaurants called the Nitty Gritty, but that is N-I-T-T-Y. This is Nitty, N-I-T-T-Y, K-N-I-T-T-Y. Spelled the same word twice. Um, yeah, sorry. Joan owns Nitty Gritty Shop. Her daughter has started dyeing. She is Dynasty Fibers, designed by Sammy Joe. And this is on their Scanson base, which is, um, I believe, a pun, not a pun, a... Um, play on how we who are from Wisconsin say Wisconsin <laughs> when we're talking. Um, I have to think really hard to not say it like that, but it's okay. It's from, it, it's where I'm from. It's where I grew up. It's how I talk. Anyway, this is their Honey Bee Kisses colorway. This was their colorway of the month at the shop. Fingering weight, and it is 60% superwash merino, 30% nylon, and 10% bamboo. I've never worked with socks with bamboo, so this will be exciting. 
uh, through 434 yards to 100 grams. This nice honey color with these black and white speckled areas. And yeah, I'm excited to knit this one up as well. That is it for acquisitions. I bought a substantial lot and stuff came in the mail. I should have more acquisitions for next week. <laughs> next episode. My plan right now is to record every two weeks because I want to make sure I have stuff to talk about each week. As we get further in and we get more comfortable with each other and I get more comfortable doing this, if I don't have a ton, we might still do an episode anyway, but we'll have to see how that goes. So from here, I'm going to transition into life stuff. If that's not what you're here for, thanks for checking me out. Checking me out. Thanks for <laughs> checking the episode out. And I will see you guys back here for the next one. So life stuff. Uh, like I was saying, uh, lots of adulting over the last two weeks since I saw you, um, including Colin going down to Milwaukee to get his standing desk from the office. He is officially home, to, works from home permanently. So their office is, they're letting Lisa go on their office and he went to get his stuff so he can have his work from home office, which has been really nice because for most of the pandemic, he worked, not most, all of the pandemic while we were home, he worked in the living room at our coffee table on the couch. And that's not the most conducive or comfortable <laughs> workspace. Also, he had to share the room with me all the time and I'm distracting. So then I had to go down to our old apartment and start getting ready to have that uh, checked out and closed off and closed off, closed out all that stuff. So there was lots of cleaning and packing and goodwill runs. It was like the move part two. And it was just one of the days I worked myself so hard that I got home and had to lay on the bed and read a book. And that's all I could do because knitting was too much to ask. It was a really hot day and I worked way too hard. So that's all done. We are officially out of the apartment. We are done living there. We are our connections to there are done, which is both it's bittersweet. We lived there for five years, so we lived there for a long time. And, um, yeah, it's just, just good to be out of there. And now we're fully working on getting settled into the house here. Went to a wedding last weekend. Uh, one of my very good friends from college who I've known for like 16 years got married. Got to see a bunch of my friends from college that I haven't seen in a very long time. And we had a really nice time. But then Sunday we had to recover, not because we went too hard or anything, but because it was a two hour drive there and a two hour drive back. So that was a little exhausting. We got home very late, later than we normally get back from places because we're old. We're not old, but yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave it there and I will check in with you guys in the next one. So look for a new episode in about two weeks. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you later. Bye.